All right, welcome everybody. Let's do this. Um, let's continue our journey of statistics. For today's lesson, the major game plan will be, can you interpret the graph to make certain inferences or conclusions, right? So here we have certain types of distributions that we're gonna take a look, of, look at, and we're gonna see some real world scenarios of how these distributions are gathered. So take a second, have this in your notes. We'll put this away for right now. And take a second, copy this down. And yeah, so here let's read the essential question. How can we interpret graphs with certain types of distributions, right? So have this down, have this down, have this down, have this down. And let's say you do have it down here. Let's take a look at the first type of distribution. Uh, here we will have a normal distribution. So it'll be this one over here. And what is something that, um, let me put this question over here for you. Oh, let me fix the camera angle a little bit. It says, based on some of these graphs, what can you interpret about the data values, right? So based on some of these graphs, what can you interpret about the data value? So when we take a look at this normal distribution, notice where are the data values, right? It has a nice even type curve, right? But one thing that we should write down is the data values are concentrated more in the center. So here, more of your data values are here versus here or here. And let's say that this value is zero and this is some higher number, right? Let's say 100, okay? Um, so for this normal distribution, can you think of real world examples where, here, let me get the right, uh, this one, right. Let's take a look at this question. It says, can you think of examples where if you gathered many data values on a particular scenario, the data values would have this type of distribution, right? So can you think of a real world example where if I gathered all the data on this idea, and if I were to graph that idea, the data values would have to look something like this. If I were to gather it all up and then put it on a graph, right? That's the question I'm asking you. I'll ask it one more time. Can you think of examples where if you gathered all the data values on a particular scenario or idea, the data values would have this type of distribution, okay? What I want you to do is pause the video and think about it, right? Pause the video and think about it. And I'll go through some examples. Here, what would a distribution like this have? Imagine if you looked at something like height, right? Let's take a look at height. Imagine if I went to the United States of America and I took every single person in the United States, right? You're gonna have some people who are very short, some people who are very tall, but then you're also gonna have a lot of people who are gonna be average height. And if I were to gather all those data values, then it would have to have this type of distribution, right? It's not gonna be like something like this, where everybody is very, very short or somebody is very, very tall if I take a lot of data values. Maybe in like a smaller situation, in a smaller setting, but if I were to do it for like the whole country, it would have this distribution, right? Pause the video, try and think of another one, right? What type of idea would have to have this type of distribution? And if you want, you could just raise your hand and say, oh, Mr. G, I have an idea, right? And I'll take a look at it. But what are some other examples? You could think of weight, I'm sorry, of height. You could think of weight, right? Some people will be very skinny. Some people will be a little bit overweight, but then there's also people who are gonna have average weight, right? Um, what are some other ones? Maybe like the SAT exam, like for a test. Right? You're going to have some people who don't do very well on a test. You're going to have some people who do very well on a test. And then a lot of the other data values will be in the center. Right? Because some people will do 
on average so so okay so this is a normal distribution let's take a look at this one over here what do you notice about this picture over here this is what we call a skew right for this one this will be called skew right now here what do you notice about the data values they are concentrated more on the left side it's more left heavy and the reason why we say it's called skew right is because it's like it kind of goes like this like it has this tail on the right side it's going to be the opposite of this one what do you think this is going to be called this is called a skew left where my data values are concentrated more on the right side and it has this tail on the left side okay so you can pause the video and think about it what I want you to do is think about can you think of a particular example right in a real world where if I gathered all the data values right it must have this distribution where all the data values or more of the data values are to the left side or you could even think about it for the other one can you think of a scenario where all the data values are on the right side okay pause the video and think about it. what are some real world scenarios where if I gathered all those data values it has to have this type of distribution or this type of distribution okay hmm let's see let's see skew right what would be a good one for this maybe like a difficult exam right difficult exam if this is zero and a hundred if the exam is very difficult you're probably gonna have more students who do very bad versus very good um, what else for this one I guess you could say easy exam right an easy exam more people are going to do very well on the exam versus not so well because the test was easy you could think of something like retirement right like you're more likely to retire at an older age versus a younger age um, I know it sounds very bad but also death by natural cause like you're more likely to pass away due to health conditions at an older age versus a younger age right. and skew right um, what would be another example of this oh you could say this is a good one household income right like imagine if this is uh, I don't know like a million dollars do you think there are many families in the world that have a million dollars, uh, that gain a million dollars every year, right? Let's just say, probably not, right? More often, the average income in a household, let's say it's like, I don't know, like $70,000 or uh, $40,000, but it's definitely not like a million. And you're gonna have more people who make this amount of money in the world versus this amount of money in the world. So if I were to gather all those data values, it would have that type of distribution, okay? That's the idea. Now, if we were to go through a lot of these examples, it'll be, uh, I think, very tiresome. And I think for this type of distribution, we'll take a look at it some other day because it's a, it's a lot to do for one day. I think these three are very good, but hopefully that felt okay. And remember that today's goal is can you interpret graphs to make certain inferences or conclusions? That's the main idea for today. Can you interpret graphs? So let's take a look at this worksheet over here. And let's take a look at the first question. It's saying, let's read it together. It says, transportation officials collect data on flight delays. Okay, so let's say if you wanna take a flight, oh God, that's a bad airplane. All right, let's say if I have an airplane, right? Um, there could be delays within your flight. Uh, the number of minutes past the scheduled departure time that, that a flight takes off. Okay, so it's a flight delay. Consider the dot plot of the delay times for 60 big air flights during the December 
of 2020. Okay, so it's in December, so it's near, uh, let's say, Christmas. Right? Okay, looking at these data values and looking where the data values are, where are the data values concentrated? Right? Can you interpret the graph to make certain inferences or conclusions? So why don't you think about that before we even look at these questions over here. What can you interpret? Okay. Um, well, let's see. Letter A, it says, what do you think this graph is telling us about the flight delays for these 60 flights? Um, what can you interpret from it, right? It looks like all the data values are where? They're here. Right? So there weren't um, or I should say uh, the flight delays weren't too long. Right? I could I could make this conclusion because taking a look it looks like it was only like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. That's where like a lot of the data values were. Were there some other ones over here? Yes, but not as frequent. And notice what type of distribution does this have, right? Based on our notes, uh, this looks like a skew right. Because more of my data values are here versus towards the end. And that's the idea over here. It looks kind of like something like this, right? So the flight delays weren't too long. Are there any other things you could think about? Uh, what else? Yeah, okay, the flight delays weren't too long. Um, can you think of a reason why the data presented by this graph provide important information? Who might be interested in this data distribution? Hmm, is this important? Is this information important to you? Well, maybe not to you, but maybe for some people, right? Like imagine if I'm a big airline company, I want to know how well my flights are leaving, then that's an important idea. Or imagine if I wanted to take a flight during Christmas. If I knew that the delays weren't too long, then I would be more inclined to actually take a flight. If I knew the delays were very, very long, as a consumer, I probably wouldn't want to take a flight during that time because I'm going to be waiting so long. Okay, so let me just write that down, I guess. Um, a consumer. So someone, a consumer is not like just like eating food or something. It's like a consumer is someone who purchases a flight. So a consumer would be inclined to take a flight during December 2020 because the delays on average aren't too long. Okay. Based on your previous work with dot plots, would you describe this plot as representing a symmetric or skewed data distribution? Recall that a skewed data distribution is not mound or, or shape. Explain your answer. Well, we kind of just uh, went through the idea. Is there a type of skew data? Yes. Skew right. Yeah, because more of the data values are over here, are over here. Okay, remember that what is the goal for today's lesson? Can you interpret the graph to make certain inferences or conclusions? So we did that for this scenario. What I'd like you to do is turn the page and try it over here. Right. Um, let's take a look. It says a random sample of 80 viewers of a television show was selected, right? A random sample of 80 viewers of a television show were selected. Uh, the dot plot below shows the distribution of ages and years of these 80 viewers, okay? 
So here is a television show. I don't know what show it is. But notice that these are the ages of the people who watch the show. Right? Based on this, let's pause the inf let's pause the video. What information can you pull from it? Right? Without even like looking at these questions or whatever, right? Like just based on this, you have 80 people watching a TV show, and here are the ages of the show. I'm sorry, the ages of the people who are watching the show. What can you interpret from the data? Right. Hmm. What do you think this graph is telling us about the ages of the 80 viewers? Well, where are the data values, right? It looks like a lot of the data values are here, right? It looks like many older people watch, uh, watch, oh, I'm sorry, this show. Many older people watch this show. And so I should write that here. Many older people watch this show. Because the data values are more over here. Can you think of a reason why the data presented by this graph provides important information? Who might be interested in this data distribution? Hmm. Who would be interested in this data distribution? Right. Think about it. Pause the video and think about it. Maybe people in advertisement. Like imagine if I needed to show a commercial. Show a commercial. Right? So if I have to show a commercial for this TV show, I'm probably going to show things that appeal to people of older age. Whatever those things are, if I know older people are going to be watching this show, then I'm more inclined to try and sell them something that is more appealing to them. Okay. Uh, I mean, but there are other examples, and whatever you think they are, just write them down and we'll go over it together. Based on your work with dot plots, could you describe this plot as representing a symmetric or skewed distribution? Hmm. What type of skewed graph do you think is being showed over here? It's which one of these is showed over here? It looks like it's a skew, a skew left, right? Where the data values are concentrated over here. So there we go. We could have a skew left. Okay, let's continue. Here, it says the following histogram represents the age distribution of the population in the United States in 2020. What do you think this graph is telling us about the population of the United States? Hmm. This graph represents a distribution of the population in the United States. What do you think this graph is telling us about the population of the United States? So here, because maybe it's a little blurry to see, this is like 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. This part is like 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, right? This is the years old of like people in the United States. What do you think this graph is telling us about the population of the United States? Pause the video, right? Pause the video and think about it. Pause the video and think. Don't just wait for me to write. Think of something that this data is telling us. The distribution is uniform, or in a sense that it looks like it's all even, right? You have the amount of people who are between zero and five years old, or five to 10 years old, or 10 to 15 years old. It looks like there's the same amount of people within this age range. It looks like the same amount of people 
are in this in this are in the same age range. Okay. And why might we want to study this data represented by this graph? Hmm. Why is this why is this important information important for someone who works in the government in the United States? Right. Something to think about. And we'll go over in class. Here, what does it say? 30 students from the Academy of Future Leaders were asked how many pets they owned. The following box plot was prepared for their answers. What does the box plot tell us about the number of pets owned by 30 students at the Academy of Future Leaders? Right, so notice this says what? Uh, this is hard to see. What is this number over here? Is this, um, this says 10, this says 86420, okay. So what does this box plot tell us about the number of pets owned by 30 students? It looks like these students have pets and it looks like they have between like oh how do I interpret the box plot hmm well it looks like more of the data values are here right because this part so you have a lot of people who own between two two to six pets in this class And why might this understanding this data behind this graph be important? Um, honestly, I don't even know, but sure. Whatever the question says. All right, what I'd like you to do is take a look at this exit ticket. It's really good. It says, the following histogram represents the age distribution of the population in Kenya in 2010. Please review the graph and answer the following sentences in incomplete. So notice this is like 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, right? Would you describe this graph as symmetric or skewed? Explain your choice, right? Try and go through these questions and we're going to go over it in class, right? So notice that this is talking about age distribution in Kenya. And this is very interesting compared to what you saw for the age distribution in the United States. Okay, I'll see you in class.